Hey guys, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to learn how to solve conservation of momentum problems. By the end of the video, you will be able to, of course, solve conservation of momentum problems. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by talking about the law of conservation of momentum, which states that in a closed system, momentum is conserved. So we can summarize that mathematically by saying that the sum which we use that capital sigma to represent, of our initial momentum is equal to the sums of our final momentum. So one thing to keep in mind here, guys, is remembering that momentum is a vector. So the direction of our motion is going to affect whether we are adding or subtracting um, when we're looking at it as if they're scalars. So with that, let's go ahead and move forward to start talking about how to solve conservation of momentum problems. So there are a few steps for drawing, solving a conservation of momentum problem. Um, and you will likely recognize these because they're very similar to our conservation of energy problems. But instead of identifying the types of energy, you have to identify the direction of our velocity and therefore the direction of our momentum. So just as with solving conservation of energy problems, you want to start by drawing a before and an after picture. And once you've done that, you're going to want to list your givens with each picture. Using your pictures and your givens, you're going to write an equation for your, the sum of your potential, or sorry, your initial momentum. And then you'll write an equation for the sum of your final momentums, momenta, sum that equal to each other, and then solve for whatever you're being asked to solve for. Now, one thing I actually like to do is I like to draw my before picture and I like to draw my after picture. And I like to list all my givens and set my equations. And then I can set my equal sign over the line separating my two pictures. And I find that that's a really helpful way to organize my thinking. So with that, let's go ahead and practice solving some conservation of momentum problems. So I'm going to start by looking at my first example. So two meatballs of identical mass collide and move off. That is, they move in their own directions. The left meatball was traveling at 3.5 meters per second right, and the right meatball was initially traveling at a velocity of 4.0 meters per second left. After the collision, the left meatball is traveling at a velocity of 1.0 meters per second to the left, and we need to find the velocity of the right meatball after the collision. So let's start by drawing a picture. So on the before side, I am going to have my two meatballs which I'm going to call L and R. L is going to be traveling at 3.5 meters per second to the right, and R will be traveling at 4 meters per second left, or negative 4 meters per second. And we know that they both have a mass m. And then I'm ready to draw my after side. So again, I want to go ahead and draw my left and my right meatballs. This time, my left meatball is traveling to the left at one meter per second, and my right meatball is traveling at some mystery velocity. And again, the masses of our two meatballs are the same. Now that I've done this, I'm ready to start with my initial momentum equation. So I know that my initial momentum is equal to my final momentum, and I know that my initial momentum is going to be equal to the momentum of the left meatball plus the momentum of the right hand meatball. And I'm using that R to represent R and L to represent left and right, and that little I to represent initial. And that is going to be equal to the momentum of my left meatball after the collision plus the momentum of my right meatball after the collision. Now that, I have my, now that I have my kind of basic equation, I'm ready to expand out. I'm going to go ahead and do that up here since I'm running out of space. So I know that the momentum of my left um, meatball is equal to the mass of that meatball times its velocity. And the same for my right meatball and for both meatballs at the end. You can see here I've kind of forgotten to write that V. I sometimes move a little too quickly here. Here we go. 
So what that's going to give me is that MV L initial plus MV right initial is equal to MV left final plus MV right final. And you can see I've got the same mass for all my meatballs. So I can actually cancel out my mass. And now that I've done that, I'm ready to sub and solve and plug in my numbers. So the velocity of my left meatball is 3.5. And the initial velocity of my right hand meatball is negative four meters per second. We know it's negative since it's traveling in what I have defined as the negative direction. Similarly, on the left hand side, on the, in, on the after side of my equation, I know that the um, final velocity of my left hand meatball is negative one meters per second since it's traveling to the left. And that the final velocity of my right hand meatball is what I'm trying to find. So simplifying this, I get that the final velocity of my right hand meatball is equal to 0 0.5 meters per second. And I can leave it like that because I've already defined um, the positive direction as being to the right, but I like to be a little more clear and specifically and specify that it is to the right. Now I do want to mention here guys, um, just so y'all are aware in case you got tripped up in the algebra, what I did, I subtracted four from 3.5 and then I added one to both sides to get my final velocity by itself. So one thing I want to make note of is you may see the term perfectly, perfectly inelastic. And what that word means is that the two objects stick together. So think of, for example, um, if I throw um, some silly putty at a cart, one of our like low motion carts in the lab, the silly putty will likely stick to the cart and they will move off together. Um, so I just want to mention that um, because you may see that, sh that term show up. So let's go ahead and look at an actual example of a perfectly inelastic collision. And as you can see, we're on a little bit of a meatball theme in this video. So in this case, a 16 kilogram meatball is thrown at a velocity of eight meters per second to a 47 kilogram skateboarder who is at rest. The skater catches the ball and subsequently slides with the meatball across the ice. What is the final velocity of the skater and the meatball? So let's start by drawing a picture of our before situation. So before the two meet, we have our 16 kilogram meatball, which I'm gonna call M, M, and that is traveling at a velocity of eight meters per second. And I'm, and I'm gonna assume that again, this is the positive, that right is the positive direction. And given that our velocity is positive, I'm gonna assume that it's traveling to the right. Next to that, we have a skateboarder who has a mass of 47 kilograms and is at rest. Thus, he has an initial velocity of zero meters per second. Drawing my after picture, my skateboarder and meatball are traveling together. So we have a skateboarder with a meatball in his hand. They're gonna have a mass of, so I'm gonna call that mass, I'm just gonna call that little, that little m, just call it mass. And that's gonna be equal to our mass of our meatball plus our mass of our skateboarder, or 16 plus 47, giving us a mass of 63 kilograms afterwards. And we have some mystery final velocity that we don't know. So setting up our equation, we know that our initial momentum is equal to our final momentum. Thus, looking at our before picture, the mass of the meatball times the velocity of the meatball plus the mass of the skater times the velocity of the skater is equal to the mass of the skater plus the meatball, which I can write as um, m or I could write if I wanted to. If I wanted to not bother with this whole piece here, I can write it as mm plus ms because their velocities are not changing, times their combined final velocity. Now that I've done this, I'm ready to plug in some numbers. So we have our mass times our velocity of our meatball 
16 times 8 plus the mass of our skater times his velocity, which is 0, plus the mass of the meatball plus the mass of the skater, which is 63, times our final velocity, which is a mystery. So that term will cancel. We'll divide both sides by 63, and we'll get a final velocity of 2 meters per second. And that is still going to be to the right, um, since we're assuming that we're in, since we have defined that as the positive direction. So moving forward to one last example. In this case, we have a nine kilogram meatball sitting on a plate. Suddenly it explodes, breaking up into two pieces. One piece has a mass of 5.5 five kilo, 5 .5 kilograms and went towards the right with a velocity of 15 meters per second. What was the velocity of the other piece? So let's start with a picture of our before situation. So initially, we have a meatball with a mass of 9 kilograms and a velocity of 0, since it's sitting at rest on a plate. When it spontaneously explodes, we'll hit our after scenario. So our collision is when it explodes. Our after scenario um, has two chunks of meatball, which I'm going to call 1 and 2. The first one has a mass of 55 of 5.5 kilograms. And I, I'm putting, I'm going to draw that as actually our number two, um, because it's traveling towards the right with a velocity of 15 meters per second. Our second piece is going to travel with some mystery velocity. And it's going to have a mass of our total mass. So 9 minus the mass m2 of 5.5. Thus, the mass m1 is going to be 3.5 kilograms. So setting up our equation, we know our initial, our initial momentum is equal to our final momentum. And we know that's the sum of all of our momenta. We know that our initial momentum is equal to mass times velocity of our initial meatball, which I'll just call mivi. That's going to equal the mass times the velocity of our set of our first meatball. So m1 v1 plus the mass and velocity of our second meatball. So we know the left side of our equation is going to go to zero since our initial or the initial velocity of our meatball is zero. Thus, the mass of our first chunk times its velocity plus the mass of the second chunk times its velocity are equal to zero. Therefore, the mass we're trying to find times, the, so the mass that we're trying to find, uh, or the mass of our first chunk times its velocity is equal to the negative um, of the momentum of our second chunk. So m1 v1 is equal to negative m2 v2. And what I'm doing is I'm equating the left side of my equation to zero and subtracting m2 v2 from both sides. One more piece of work before I do this. I'm going to go ahead and actually solve for v1. When I do that, I'll get that negative m2 times v2, or the momentum of my second chunk, um, divided by the mass of my first chunk is equal to the velocity of my first chunk. With numbers, of course, that becomes negative 5.5 times 15 over 3.5 is equal to our final velocity. And our second piece of meatball must have a velocity of approximately 24 meters per second to the left of negative 24 meters per second or 24 meters per second to the left for this explosion to follow the law of conservation of momentum. So now that you've seen three different kinds of momentum problems, I think we're ready to talk takeaways. So first of all, momentum always conserved. And second, we can use the conservation of momentum to solve collision problems. So with that, you now know how to solve conservation momentum problems. It is your turn to give this a try on your own. Best of luck and happy solving.